ten lepers, nine Jews, and one foreigner, a Samaritan. There they were, standing at the prescribed distance from Jesus and his companions. The law lay down a minimum of 50 yards. Somehow, news had got to them that Jesus of Nazareth had cured a leper somewhere, somehow. And now on this lonely frontier between Galilee and Samaria, they have waited, hoping that he might pass this way. They were not allowed to come near him, and so they shout out from a distance, Jesus, Master, take pity on us. Heal us. Please heal us. And Jesus said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And off they went. And somewhere on the way, it happened. We can capture something of their excitement. Look, look at my hands. They have fingers again, and I can move them now. And they found they could walk again, not just drag themselves along. And they could even dance with feet that they had not danced since they were children. In sheer abundant gratitude, their first thought must have been to find their healer, to show him what he had done for them. But is that what we find? One man returns to give thanks. One man. Were not ten made clean, where are the nine? Ninety percent give no thanks. And that mirrors what mankind is like. Where are the other nine? Asks Jesus. And of course, he knew where they were. One had been a shopkeeper, and the moment he had his health certificate, there he was, back in his shop. And another had been a farmer, and that very evening he was out tilling the land and milking the cows. He'd been away far too long. There was so much to be done in that farm now. What had happened? All those men, all ten of them, were touched by Jesus. Their skin had been healed. But skin is only the surface of the body. Deep within them, they hadn't changed at all was as if nothing had happened. Only the foreigner, the Samaritan, had come back. It was not only his skin, just his hand, but his heart too. And the best gift that Jesus gave him was not the miraculous healing, the gift of a spirit able to give thanks and be joyful. We are all touched by Jesus, the seminarians here offering their lives for the ministry of the priesthood, and you who are sharing with us in this Mass. But how deep do we allow him to touch us and to heal us? We know that God often touches us to a bout of illness or a particular trial. The Good Shepherd brings us safely through these valleys of darkness, but he wants to heal us and reach us at a deeper level too, to have an abiding sympathy for those who are always ill, to give us a deep spirit of thankfulness, to make it possible for us to forget ourselves and really begin to love. Here is the joy and the peace that the Lord promised that no human being would ever be able to take from you. Yes, no human being except yourself. We call the Mass the Blessed Eucharist, a word that means thankfulness. It is almost as though God would say to us, a thankful spirit is my best gift to you. It is the greatest gift I have to give. I remember once visiting a school in Africa, and at the end of the day, I distributed a bag of sweets to hundreds of children, just enough for each to get one sweet. Yet each child came up holding out both hands to take that one tiny sweet. I thought the gesture meant they were expecting a handful. But the teacher told me afterwards it was simply their way of expressing thanks to take something with both hands. In fact, in their language, the word for thanks literally meant with two hands. To receive with two hands was their way of saying thank you. And there's a message here for us all. This is the way to meet life, with both hands open to receive the best that God has to give. That's why the priest at Mass prays with open hands when he stands at the altar. Did you know that? Everything we have, God has given us. On Harvest Sunday, we could hardly forget it. Open hand is the gesture of the receiver. Have you ever noticed how a sick person in bed would always take your hand with, with the two of theirs? 
open hand is always also the best way to become giving hands. Hands that can serve, hands that can suffer for the sake of others. And I cannot help thinking that someone may be listening to me who has no hands, or whose child has no hands, or whose own hands can no longer open because they're crippled with arthritis. But what I've been saying is not really so much about hands as about people, about you. You are like a human hand. You should be open to receive so much with thanks, able to give so much with an immense potential for loving and healing and bringing you real warmth and happiness into the lives of many people. And I want to end by saying something I believe in very much. I believe that God's hands are somehow in all the loving hands that have opened in thankfulness to me in life, to bring me warmth and joy, to lift me out of my own small little ways, to challenge me to grow up and to face life with open hands. We gather here to remind ourselves of one pair of hands, the hands of a carpenter that worked, the hands of a savior that healed, the hands of a redeemer that were nailed to a cross, those open hands stretched by the nails to express God's love that no other hands have ever done. And I think that our hands today are somehow meant to be his hands, our heart his heart, so that God's love may go on being present in the world in what we receive and what we give, in all we do and in all you suffer. Finally, let us make our own the lovely prayer of a great Christian man and poet. Lord, thou hast given so much to us. Give us one thing more, the gift of open hands and a grateful heart. Amen.